tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou e mihi mai kia mātou a o ti rā kia au i tēnei ata. Kei te mana whenua, tainui waka, tainui iwi, tainui whenua, tēnā koutou e manaaki mai nei i a mātou. I tēnei wiki i haere mātou ki te whakanui te rā o rātana i reira, ki reira mātou e tūtaki atu te ope o tainui. Nā reira, tēnā koutou e mihi mai kia au, me ki hoki mai ki te wāhi o taku whare wānanga. Kei te tika ngā mihi, ngā whai kōrero, kua kōrero hea mō rātou kua mene atu ki te pō, haere kia rātou, hoki mai kia tātou te hunga ora, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. A ki ngā waka o te moana nui a kiva, talofa, malole lei, whakalofa lawhi atu, keo rāna, bulavinaka, ngā mihi nui o te Pacifica, kia koutou o ti rā tai āwhio nō i a tātou katoa. Good morning and thank you very much for your welcome. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I'm so pleased that I was given the opportunity uh, to come along and participate, if only for a short while, in your conference this morning. Before I um, really warm up, can I just check that my voice isn't reverberating off that back wall? Because there's quite a... So it's okay up there? Great. All right, because I tend to speed up, that's the other thing. Um, so, I want to thank you all very much for welcoming me here. I'm mindful of the observation that's already been made that you all have, are attending this conference while still ostensibly on holiday. And I greet and honour you for that commitment that you show by being here. I'm delighted to be here because it's an opportunity, um, albeit, as I said briefly, to introduce myself to you, to talk a little bit about what I think is important, and to begin a conversation and a relationship that I hope will unfold positively and productively over the next three years. We are a first world nation. We have first world aspirations, and we need a first world economy to deliver on those aspirations. And a very, very critical part of that is a world-class education system. And we want, here in New Zealand, Aotearoa New Zealand, to make the most of our resources, physical and human, uh, natural and intellectual, and how we develop those are largely in the hands of you. You get to spend a significant part of your working day and your working lives developing your professional abilities to share with the young people who will participate in and contribute to our society. Here in New Zealand, we have many challenges and we have many opportunities. And all of those opportunities are ones that we want available to all New Zealanders. I said a little earlier that we wanted a world-class education system. And since I've become the Minister of Education, I have read widely and voraciously and frequently seen that we are a world-class education system. Well, no. While the system underperforms for significant numbers of New Zealand students, we are not yet entitled to call ourselves a world-class education system. But we're very close to it. And we must harness all your capabilities, all your creativity, all your commitment to indeed allow us to proudly pronounce that we are indeed a world-class system. In order for us to achieve that, a number of critical elements have to be present. And this morning, I want to touch on just two. Those critical elements, in the first instance, are you, the teaching profession, the leaders of education, the shapers of learning and of learners. As we've just heard from Mark Treadwell, the challenge today and on into the future is how we facilitate learners to learn. 
how we give them the tools and abilities to seek out the knowledge content that they need for the pathways that they feel enabled and have secured qualifications to, part, to, to journey through. So you are critical. We spend, as a country, through the tax that you and others pay, just over $12 billion in the education sector. And almost half of that is paying you, because you are the people who are able to bring this teaching practice into the classroom to make the interaction with the learner a creative and productive one. You are the ones who are able to facilitate the lift and achievement that we all want. We want it for the learner, we want it for professional satisfaction, we want it for community and social strength, and we want it for economic productivity and growth. We want New Zealand students to leave school having secured a qualification that allows them to participate in a modern society, that allows them to be able to contribute, that allows them to be able to reap the rewards of the learning and the qualifications that they have secured. It is not a place to be, to be dependent on the state, to be dependent on someone else for your succour and your well-being. We, all of us, are parts of families, of whānau, of community, of iwi, of our country. And all of that supports us and helps us be strong in whatever it is we choose to do. But the greatest success are those who leave their formal schooling with a passport to a real life. Those who have been able, enabled by you to secure a qualification that makes it possible for them to choose a life quality that they want for themselves. So yours is a huge task. It's an honourable task. And it's one I hope, and actually personified by your presence here, one that excites you, one that energises you, one that you are committed to. Because of course, this particular cohort of the teaching profession has demonstrated by its presence here today that you're at the cutting edge of teaching. You have understood the power and the transactional and transformational potential of this tanifa called technology. You have understood that if you can uh, capture it, ride it, navigate it, adventure with it, create, that you have the ability to have a contagion of potential just breaking out across our country. So that's the second critical element that I wanted to touch on today in order that we are able to truly and proudly say that we have a world-class education system, and that is the role of technology. You are all here over these next two days um, willing and hungry to learn about the next phase of your own professional development and learning in association with this technology. Because after all, it's just a vehicle. It's just a tool. It is a powerful and potent tool, and it is one that our government has seen the absolute criticality of. We have invested $1.5 billion in ultra-fast broadband, we expect that it will be available to 99.9% .9 of students by 2016. We've invested 30 to $40 million a year in the SNUP project. <laughs> um, the other joy of reading education literature is the acronyms that it is sprinkled with um, in condiment style. And so the upgrading of schools such that the connections uh, to the ultra-fast broadband is going as fast as possible. 700 schools to December, uh, another 350 schools this year. Another really important initiative that we have invested in is the Putative Network for Learning. Some of you may know about it, all of you may know about it, but we're expecting to invest a further 300 to $400 million 
in developing the network for learning. You will have the opportunity to participate in uh, the design and development of the network, but it will be a 24-7 vehicle that carries content, carries uh, opportunity for uh, improving your own practice, providing you with a vehicle to share, and providing for this great idea that best practice becomes common practice. This vehicle, this Tanifa technology, has the powerful opportunity to do that, to take your creative thinking, your professional um, design of resources, your uh, processes of interaction, and pass it on to other cohorts of teachers who are just as interested in improving their own practice. Why? So that the learner can be facilitated to learn to the best of his or her ability. And that's why we must never forget that our whole purpose investing in this world-class education system is so that our young people, and not so young, all New Zealanders have the opportunity for lifelong learning, and in so doing, build the social and intellectual capacity of Aotearoa New Zealand, while also growing a productive economy to support all those things that are part of our aspiration as a first world nation. So we have invested in you, we have invested in technology, two critical components that help us become the world-class system that we want to become. And in so doing, I want to work with you over the next three years to see measurable gain, to see all New Zealand students achieving at the same or similar levels. We cannot leave students behind. And so this morning, while you thought we were having a poor hitty, in fact, what we were putting on for you was a workshop. A workshop of being in a place, hearing a language, understanding bits of it, seeing a practice occur, getting a glimpse of what some of it might mean, but actually profoundly excluded from most of it. And it worries me that too many students, Māori and Pacifica in particular, may be having indeed, according to achievement results, are having that exact same experience in their classrooms, in their schools, in their places of learning. So if you don't, if you can relate to that idea that you really don't want to be sitting and watching a process, and by the way, a beautiful language um, unfolding before you and you not having access to the richness and opportunity of it, then you will be able to empathize with those students that you meet every day in your places of learning who are equally feeling disconnected, unable to participate, not finding the relevance, not part of what their norm is, not understanding that actually in Aotearoa New Zealand today, and even more so into the future, there isn't any longer a particular norm. We truly do live in a multiracial society and every day graduating towards becoming a multicultural society. It is one thing to have people here of diversity who uh, practice a culture. By the way, New Zealanders tend to think of culture as something you buy, eat, wear, go to watch or participate in. But actually, culture really is what we do every day. And it's that culture, the one we do every day, that is the most powerful. So our culture of learning and of facilitating learning and of being focused on real and measurable achievement is the kind of culture that we need to be constantly reaffirming and strengthening and committing to personally and professionally. I want to encourage collaboration, and yes, I want to encourage professional competition. Professional competition in the context of collaboration, did you notice that little alliteration there, all those Cs? When you do that, you not only improve yourself, you improve those around you. 
It's in the same kind of sense as when Sir Tipene O'Regan has been arguing about the economic development of Gaita, who talks about a new model of economy, one called collective capitalism, one where everybody participates in the market, but everybody can benefit from it. So these are aspirations that he has for Ngaitahu. These are aspirations that I have for our world-class system. I and you, we, we are so lucky to be citizens of Aotearoa New Zealand, to be born to this country. We are lucky to be born to this country, or one in four of our students come from an immigrant background or who have chosen to make this our country. All of us have migrated here from somewhere over time, except Ngāti Pūrei, we were always here. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just had to get that in. Um, but all of us have made Aotearoa New Zealand our home. We've made it our home and we have to honour that citizenship. There is so much that we get in the gifts of citizenship by being a part of Aotearoa New Zealand and we do have the reciprocal obligation of giving back and that legacy that comes through our culture of trying to do better and more for the generations that will follow us. So, yours is a powerful, important, critical and profound job and opportunity and challenge. And I, as the Minister of Education, newly minted, commit to you my energy, my advocacy, my commitment, and my unrelenting focus on the learner at the center and achievement when they leave your places of learning. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with you this morning. I wish you well in the two days ahead of you. May it be enjoyable, may it be professionally challenging, may it be a personal development one. May each of you have some sort of epiphany uh, throughout the process because I want you to go out there and make magic with our kids. Kia ora tātou. Kia ora.